What is up guys and welcome to another video. So this is the second part of the road to ascended equipment. So in this video, well what this series basically is, is a recap of what I've been doing lately. Not made too much progress, uh, but still I've made some progress, which is quite significant in the long run actually. But let's actually start with uh, what I've acquired so far. As you can see in the previous video, uh, I got the Soja Spire, which is the ascended weapon for that I will be using for my element list. And basically, I'm not sure if I said it in the last video or if you are new here, I mainly play on Tempest and a Reaper. And since I find it a lot more difficult to play on a Tempest than on a Reaper, I will gear up the Reaper, or sorry, I will gear up the Tempest first. Why I got a Spire for it, and uh, I'm playing on a power build, so Berserker stats for everything by the way. And I also bought an amulet for uh, like laurels as well as the um, uh, EOTM currency, I can't remember what it's actually called, badges of honor or something. I also bought a berserker ring for fractal relics and that is basically it. So I currently have three ascended equipment items and I still, <laughs> I still have a long way to go. But right, uh, so right now I'm working on the trinkets because those are kind of the easiest to get. And I have eight pristine fractal relics and you need 10 to buy another trinket. And I also gathered during this time a bunch of ascended materials. So I think I should be good to go to make at least two or three armor pieces of ascended equipment. And that is really, really nice. That is basically it of what I've acquired. But I'm not sure what I'm talking about then, <laughs> sorry. But I've been starting to discovering the living story season maps. I started with the Bloodstone Fen and the story mission for that and those were really great by the way. So I will continue with the other ones later. But so right now I, on the Tempest I am kind of grinding the Bloodstone Fen just so that I can get the back item. Because if I'm not completely mistaken for the Blood Rubies which is that map's currency one of the things you can get is a blood ruby backpack. So that is cool. You can basically select the stats for that one, which I will obviously select Berserkers. And then I will continue exploring the other maps as well, because I have a wiki page open here. Um, I will probably end up getting the accessories from those maps as well, because I really enjoy just... Uh, it's kind of relaxing after doing Fractals to just go to the... Like, the living story maps and then just stay there for a few hours and just... You know, get some materials, kill a few bosses and uh, yeah, it's a lot more relaxing than Fractals because in Fractals you really have to, like if you mess something up you're screwing the entire team which is not good. So pretty much the biggest achievement in this, like since the previous video, is that I finally checked out Fractals. So I've been having some kind of like, um, what do you even call it, An anxiety or whatever. Um, because I, like, the thing about Guild Wars 2 is, it's a lot based around cooperation, especially in dungeons and fractals, and some PvP as well, but, so, I feel like I have to perform great, to not disappoint the teammates, and that is something I feel, and many others as well, in other games as well, competitive games most, most of the time, and, so I've been kind of scared of Fractals for that reason and uh, the videos I've seen uh, people say that Fractals are a bit harder than Dungeons but now I've tried Fractals, my personal Fractal level like it's quite low really it's 15 or something, I've done a bunch of Fractals the high, highest one I've done is 18 which I did today or it might have been 17 actually but that doesn't matter but I feel like Fractals are actually First of all, fractals are a lot easier than dungeons because like the first fractals you do are so much easier than the dungeons just because they, they are so forgiving. The thing about fractals is, at least in the lower levels, I obviously haven't done tier 2, 3 and 4, which I've heard are a lot more difficult, but let's leave that for later. But the tier 1 are supposed to be an entry level fractal. And the thing about those is that if you have one or two people that know what they are doing, well, then they can basically carry the team. And that's something that I haven't really felt in dungeons. 
because certain dungeon mechanics, well, this is true for fractals as well in the lower levels, but most of the dungeon mechanics actually require great cooperation. For example, in uh, Escalonian Catacombs, the first path, you would think that's really easy, right? But that actually requires a stupid amount of cooperation, because you have to... Um, it's the one with the... Um, uh, it's a Detha, or whatever it's... Whatever her name is. Basically when you set up traps and then you try to capture the Grawl or... I'm not even sure what it is. But the thing about... That requires like three people that know exactly what they are doing. Or four maybe even. It's so complex. But then Fractals. They really teach you how to play them. In the lower levels. And they are very forgiving. Because monsters there don't deal a ton of damage compared to what they do in the dungeons. And that is kind of interesting. You would think that fractals, even the lower level fractals, are harder since it's level 80 content than level 35 dungeons. But that is not the case, at least not in my opinion. I still can go back to fractals or to lower level dungeons and when I get a team that doesn't know what they are doing, uh, me included, like we completely get wrecked. But then when going to fractals and doing like any fractal, and you get a team that not, that's not entirely sure what they're doing. Like, I've never had anyone leave on the team. Even though it might have taken two attempts to clear the dungeon, or the fractal. But in dungeons instead, like, people leave as soon as you die once. I'm not sure what is up with that. Uh, that's just something I noticed. So, I'm really pleased with fractals, and it is, I can say from a beginner's point of view, it is exactly as everyone else says. Fractals are what dungeons are, but a lot better. Essentially, fractals are mini dungeons. And uh, the more I play fractals, the more I start thinking, like, why aren't ArenaNet doing something about the dungeons? They know how to make great content, but they just don't care about the dungeons. I'm not sure what is up with that, because... In my opinion... Dungeons should be a lot easier than they are right now, so that everyone is able to clear them. And then you can uh, move on up to, to Fractals once you get to level 80 and such. But dungeons, like, since they are so hard to do, like, there are not many people in their lower levels, you know, uh, level 30 to 78 or whatever the dungeon ranges are, there are not too many people doing dungeons, and I think a part of that is because they are so difficult. And with the difficulty they take a lot longer to clear. Since they take a lot longer to clear, they are not worth doing as much. The only dungeon that people are really doing is the Citadel of Flame. Path 1 specifically, because that one is like 10 minutes or whatever. I don't know, I just think it's so weird. But I'm still really happy that I've tried out Fractals. I can't wait to move to the tier 2 fractals as well as the three and four eventually but that is gonna take a long while and a lot of practicing and i'm also really pleased with the rewards in fractals now i've said it i've said it before and i will say it again i think goals are really important especially in mmos i think it's kind of heartbreaking to play a game and not an mmo and not feel like you're progressing anything so that's why goals are so important so for the next video the next road to ascended I'm actually aiming to get level 500 in uh, tailoring, I think it's called. Uh, that's basically the crafting skill to get light armors. And I will also have as a goal to get one ascended piece. Preferably the chest, because that is one that is the most expensive. I will probably end up buying it, or buying the materials for the chest piece. I'm not entirely sure, but I will probably do that, just because I think it's a lot more convenient. I don't like the waiting game, that's like the time gated. I prefer to do things uh, for a while, and then I get something that, that I can do something else with. Instead of just doing something, and then moving on to something completely different, because I can't continue what I was doing before. Wow, oh, that is really confusing. But yeah, I've been having a really fun time in Guild Wars 2. Anyways, that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any tips on what I should be going for, uh, or if I could do something different uh, in terms of acquiring the Ascended Gear, then let me know in the comments below, and I hope to see you in the next video.